Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we're on to pseudoscientist number 9. Now, today's pseudoscientist, it has been kind of hard to find something from him to debunk, because lately, he's just been using his channel for advertising an app. Uh, so this is the best gift idea, and it's so great because you can give Flat Earth Dave some money. He's gonna very much appreciate this. And you can give it to people so that they can know how crazy you are. Imagine getting a Flat Earth app for Christmas. If someone got that for me, I would be more disappointed than if they just got me nothing. At least if they get me nothing, then that doesn't involve three of their dollars going to a Flat Earther. You can get some Flurf points which have no value, although you can get a free subscription out of them, as I said, no value. Or you can climb a leaderboard. But let's be real here, you're never gonna get to the top of the leaderboard because the top of the leaderboard has people that have audiences and you just can't control beat with that. Of course Caleb is on the top of the leaderboard, why wouldn't he be? I mean, at least he's managed to reach the top of one leaderboard. Foreshadowing. Anyway, that's enough poking fun at the app that he's trying to sell, let's see if he can make an argument. So, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fake NASA photos. Uh, we're just gonna drop this in here, and um, I didn't definitely took this myself, I think, and we're just gonna drop another one of those. Oh. Did I drop the same one? Oh, sorry. Uh, let's get rid of that. And we'll just drop a galaxy. I, I also definitely uh, took that as a photo. And we're gonna drop that in there as well. I definitely took that one too. So right off the bat with trying to create a fake image, they've already made a mistake. Okay, so if we look at this for a bit, what's an obvious mistake here? Ignore the bad cutting out of the stars. That's not what I'm trying to point out here. So the mistake that I noticed is that the points on the stars are not consistent they should all be pointing in the same directions. This is because the points in the stars are actually caused by the equipment taking the photo, not because stars randomly have points for some strange mysterious reason. So we'll add this one, and this one actually has a bit of text in it, and as we all know, NASA photos just have random bits of text that really shouldn't be there. That's how you know that NASA photos are fake. So why don't we add another one? Uh, there we go, there's more text in there, so now people will think, ah, this was definitely made by NASA, and we've got a little tiny Flat Earth Dave in the corner, because all of NASA's photos have Flat Earth Dave in the corner. And we'll say that this one is made by the James Webb Telescope. There we go. Dear oh dear, if you're gonna try and fake a NASA photo, at least try to do a little bit of research into what you're saying is taking the photo. I say this because that image that you've made there could not have been produced by the James Webb Telescope. And the reason for this is actually, once again, the points on the stars. You see, when it comes to photos taken by the James Webb Telescope, if a star has points in that, it would have eight of them. Six main ones, and two smaller ones. Now the telescope that would give you four points on the stars is the Hubble Space Telescope. I know this because, well, I saw a video on it by Hank Green. But if there is a fairly bright object in the image, this pattern of spikes will tell you that it's a JWST image. Hubble, on the other hand, just has these four struts, and that means Hubble images have just four spikes. Now you can read space pictures. Thanks, Hank. I know you're not going to see this, but that is not a skill that I ever thought I'd need until now. Also, it should go without saying that even if they tried to pass it off as being taken by Hubble, the spikes not lining up would still be a problem for them. Oh wow, okay, that is actually pretty bad. <laughs> what was the point of that? Seriously. I thought the point was to show that images made by NASA could just as easily be faked by a flat earther, but you haven't shown that. Like if we just take a look at the image for a second, what's that? What's that supposed to be? The famous cropped edge galaxy? And who could forget the famous MS Paint cutout star? The point that you're making isn't that NASA's images could be easily faked, the point that you're making is that you're bad at Photoshop. Especially given that one of the images that you appear to have used looks to be an image from the Hubble Space Telescope? You can't claim that NASA's images are fake if you're using one of them in an image that you're making to show how easy it is to fake NASA's images. And look, I get it, I'm not that great at Photoshop either. But if you're going to try and make a point, you need to actually have the skills or knowledge to actually be able to make that point. Like if you're gonna try and show that something like that can be faked, my first bit of advice would be don't use Photoshop. Don't use an image editing program. 
At least not for the first step anyway. If I wanted to create something like this, then I would use programming to do so. Because you gotta remember that whilst you may be able to make one really good image in Photoshop, there are heaps of James Webb and Hubble images out there already. If the Hubble and James Webb images were being faked, they probably wouldn't be using Photoshop. I'll tell you that right now. So we've got a NASA image here and uh, this looks fake and another NASA image which uh, definitely looks fake and we've got the flat earth death creation which looks just as real as the other two. So surely people can see the world of difference right between the NASA and flat earth Dave image right? I shouldn't have to point that out. And it did look like one of them was taken by the James Webb telescope whilst the other was taken by Hubble. Just a fun tidbit. Oh, and we're back to him trying to promote his app again. He really does like to promote that, doesn't he? But anyway, we've still got some time left in the video, so let's go over another one. Original video is not by Dave. Oh. A surprising amount of the content on his channel isn't by him for some reason. But we'll go over this one anyway. This is 100% proof that the moon is close and moving away from us. And you can see that it's moving away from us because it doesn't go down below the horizon. My question here to Flat Earthers would be, and this does have an answer, is that what the moon looks like? Now Flat Earthers might go, well of course it looks like that. However, whenever I've used my eyeballs to view the moon, it doesn't look like that. And the reason for this is that my eyeballs have a tendency to not overexpose the moon. You see, if you've got a video or an image being taken by a camera, and you have something that is very bright, like let's say this, then because that is so bright, it's going to look a lot bigger than what it actually is. However, if I turn this, then you can see that the light isn't as big as it might initially appear. It's actually rather small. However, I have the ability to turn down the exposure settings or turn, yeah, turn down the exposure settings on my camera. And when I do so, this appears a lot smaller. So the moon appearing really big wasn't because the moon was actually really big. It was probably because the camera's exposure had been set for not the moon, but the other things in the scene. And the reason why it appeared to get smaller is because the closer to the horizon it got, the more atmosphere that was in the way. This is because the atmosphere scatters the light from the moon, and thus the moon appears dimmer. The moon travels across our flat plane. See, it's getting smaller and it gets bigger. It's going back and forth. It couldn't be any more obvious. Now watch how it gets smaller. We would not see that drastic change if the size and distance away from us was as we're being told. Well, the only reason why it's appearing to get smaller is because you don't have the right exposure settings. A lot of cameras have auto exposure, which wouldn't necessarily expose for the brightest thing in the scene. If you actually had the right exposure settings to look at the moon, then the moon would appear a lot smaller. A lot of flat earthers don't seem to get this for some reason. Why are they so bad with cameras? You would think that after years of buying up all the P1000s, that they would have figured out something as simple as exposure by now. It's time to tell your friends and family, the earth is flat. Okay, how about I do that when flat earthers actually show that they understand cameras, and can make a good argument that doesn't involve them misunderstanding something. None of the videos that we've watched today are convincing, granted one of them was an ad. You see, these videos do seem to really just be aimed at flat earthers. They don't seem to be trying to convince anyone, not really. And it really makes sense, seeing as Dave tries to sell his app. Convincing people that are not flat earthers is actually a lot harder because a lot of people will attempt to debunk it and will be successful in that attempt. So yeah, Dave needs to do better, though technically that last video isn't even by Dave, which just proves my point even more, Dave needs to do better. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know who you think some of the future pseudoscientists in this series will be. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, Empty Nutkin, Murray, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosanna Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarge Campbell, definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you can buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.